well, and other areas. And that brings to bear the issue of insecurity in the north. Because for every you know, step has been taken, for every step rather, been taken by the government to create jobs, you know, setting up crop processing zones, building silos, um, having to buy fishing vessels and all of that. What threat does insecurity bring to this? Well, insecurity, like the one in Niger that has been contained, mm -hmm. while the one in Northeast is still ongoing, and it's affected production in terms of um, in terms of commodity food commodity prices and the rest of it for instance let me give you a typical example people go to between uh, um, Meduguri and Chad mm. there is um, there is a fish settlement in Chad where they go to the wild at snap farmers and fish and then bring it through Meduguri you know bring it through Meduguri and then bring it down to the south here. Mm. You know, most of the, in, in large scale, there's a, there's a big market, a, a big market, a big fish market in, in Enugu. Now, when this crisis started in Borono, it affected the prices of this fish because they were coming through Chad into uh, Meduguri down to the southern part. Then from that, Enugu is distributed around the country. Mm. It's like the hub, it's distributed around the country. Now. The question is, when this insecurity started, for such a commodity, it affected, it affected business in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, the, the fish commodity and even in other products, in other stable crop products coming from there. Because that area actually has the largest land mass in the country. That's the northeast zone. Now, the question you ask yourself is, or the basic challenge we're having right now is that insecurity and, uh, insecurity and a lot of policy instability is affecting the agricultural sector because a lot of people have cashed into what into the agro transform agenda and if these policies are not sustained they're going to lose their money they're going to lose their investments so there's always a tie between uh, political office you know in terms of when who comes into power and how well a sector performs of course there is a correlation between them, mm. because it, without the without without the 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 the, the federal government charting a course, investors are going to come because investors are not sure whether their funds will be protected. Mm. There are no guarantees that their funds are going to be protected. Right. There is no guarantee that their workers are going to be the expatriates they are bringing in are going to be protected. So there has to be uh, a willingness on the side of government to show that they are willing to improve a sector before other people now came to it. Okay. I would like us to look at the issue of the crops that we are exporting from Nigeria. Could you just let us into them? Well, fundamentally, we still have the cash crops, mm. which has been there from the British system till when we got our independence until now. The likes of the cocoa, the Heinz and skin, and um, even ginger, even fish has been exported, but on a very small scale and some other commodities. Now, uh, even palm kernel is being exported too, to, uh, from our borders. Now, the, the volume right now is not, the volume of export is not competitive in the sense com comparing to oil. It's not competitive. They are way apart. But remember, some time ago, the bills of this country ran on agriculture. Mm. Government officials were paid, wages were paid from agriculture. But on discovery of oil and the rest of it, the whole thing changed because the, the, the basic challenge we still have is who owns, you know, when the states were created in 19, 12, so they were created in 19, uh, uh, 1967 and all that. So who owns, where is the ownership structure? Like the state governments, most of them have agriculture set up and the rest of them, you know, like palm, palm, palm estates and the rest of them, but they are not properly being run. Because it's easier to go to the center and pick a, a huge amount of money, 10 billion naira, to run your system than to drive a system and make it work, to drive the agricultural sector in your state to make it work. Mm. So it's easier to go to the center at the end of the month, 
pick your federal allocation allowances and then run your state based on that. Then making those, so that is the issue we're having, the ownership structure in these systems. So these systems have to make attractive for investors, for the private sector to, dra to drive them because that is the way forward. The private sector has to come in and drive these systems for profits. All right, talking about the private sector, I'm just looking at uh, what the Minister for Agriculture and Rural Development was saying recently. Uh, he said that um, in the last four years, Nigeria has attracted a total investment of about $5.6 billion uh, from private investors into the agriculture sector between 2011 and 2014. What's your take on this? Well, we've attracted investment. Just like um, we've attracted investment quite all right, but has it been utilized? Has it come on ground? There's a difference between you have a consent, I want to invest in your country, you know, you have your consent to invest. Have I put the money? In real terms now. In real terms, have I put the money on ground? Mm. There's a difference, you know, because there are a series of meetings before the, the conclusion is on, before you start putting, before you start clearing sites, before you do your feasibility, your, you do your EIA and the rest of it. So the question comes first is that, I will come to you, I want to invest in your country, I want to bring X amount, and we'll start the preliminary talks and the rest of them. But before I put my money on ground, there have to be factors there on ground, mm. which will now encourage me to put my money on ground. Uh, there's actually uh, an agriculture transformation agenda policy working group, and they are meant to actually develop a document, uh, rather to document the agriculture policies of the government and institutionalize them. Do we need to institutionalize these things for them to work? Uh, you know, this should be a policy driving every step every uh, operation that the government wants to be involved in. What's your view about the need to document these things and institutionalize them, according to the minister? Institutionalizing them, as far as I'm concerned, is making them attractive for investments. Mm -hmm. You have to make the system attractive. You have to make, you have to, on government also has to look at, like research upon research has shown that Agriculture in Africa is driven by the small holder farmers. That is small scale farmers who are farming on one hectare of land as of one football field, not the big commercial system. But like what the minister, the model the minister is using, which is the hybrid system, where you have a nucleus driving all the, all the other little electrons around. Now the question now is, this model, this what they're trying to institutionalize, what is going to be the driving force? Is it just going to be? If successful government comes, that government has to give a consent. Now, if the laws of demand and supply are put in place, there is going to be and there is a market movement. You know, the law of demand and supply is a market movement. Then there's a there's going to be a free fall of uh, of commodities, free fall of cash transactions and the rest of it. That brings to me at mind our own commodities and exchange commission. I don't know if there is any work being done to help. You know support what's going on in the agriculture sector through the Abuja, it's actually the Abuja Securities and um, rather Abuja Commodities and Exchange, and exchange yeah. Commission. Is Abuja Commodities and Exchange and Commission? Is there yeah. any, any Commodity time? and Securities Exchange Commission. Are you, is the Agriculture Ministry, to what extent do you think they're working in, in relation to the Commodities Exchange to help develop prices that can be, you know, traded on the international market? Well, the you know, sad enough, here, we don't take our own thing seriously in the sense that some Nigerians, along with their European counterparts, went to Rwanda and established their own exchange, commodity exchange. Ethiopia has something similar, and Ethiopia's, uh, their stock exchange is valued, established in 2008, valued for over $2 billion, U.S. dollars. Now, our own Nigerian commodity exchange. You mean their own commodities exchange, you mean? That, that's, these are our counterparts around. Okay. You know, so who also consented to what I was saying initially, you know, the, the uh, comprehensive uh, African agricultural uh, development program that they were going to put in X amount, 10% of their budget into agricultural development and measure it by 6% productivity. Now, they've moved a step further, creating, in terms of pricing and picking up commodities, like uh, the people of Ethiopia, the, their major product is coffee you know so nigeria here we need to call these same fellows who have done this to come and revitalize or 
uh, resuscitate our community exchange, the Abuja community exchange. With that, there will be pro good pricing for farmers, even the small farm holders. And job, more jobs will be More jobs are going to be created because that is going to be like the market forces working to create a system. So successive governments will only be coming to fine-tune the system, not kick-starting it afresh. Mm. So there's a difference now. The system is totally dead right now. It's a state of comatose. So government has to come in now and resuscitate it. The CBN has to come in, take responsibility for it. The private sector has to come in. And again, with this, they can also, the silos, like the silo we're talking about that was commissioned at Abuja, can now be useful. Because farmers can go now and warehouse their products there and use the warehouse receipts as collateral to borrow money from bank, you know. So it's a system that is going to be working. But not you go and bring, build the largest silo in Africa and then you don't have your commodity exchange working. How is it going to function? How is it going to be filled up to the brim? If the commodity exchange we are working, farmers know, okay, this is the going rate for so-so grain and they go put their commodity there, use that, it will go to bank and borrow from the bank. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? All so right. th this is how it's supposed to have done. Th this is how the system is supposed to be working, ideally. But we are building a b bigger silo in Africa. Then the commodity exchange is there. We've not resuscitated it. And right there in Abuja. Okay, just as we wrap up, I just wanted to, uh, in one sentence, or in one minute, rather, what advice would you give the Minister for Agriculture and Rural Development in regard in relation to job creation, based on all that we've talked about on the program today? The major issue is that the agricultural sector should be made attractive, that it should be packaged as a business, packaged as a sustainable business model, you know. And one of the driving force is to revamp the commodity exchange in Abuja. Number two is that stable crop processing zone should be made more attractive. Guarantee, let the, the sovereign wealth fund is there. Let the sovereign wealth fund be a guarantee for those people who are coming to invest that they won't lose their money in respect of all the problems, political instability, and security we're having right now. Those are the two major steps. If the steps are taken, then you're going to have a free movement of market forces determining price of uh, commodities. All right. That will be all. Thank you. So Thank you very much. We'll leave it at that. Uh, it's been an interesting conversation uh, with you. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. Tochi Aduku is an agricultural business consultant and we have been looking at job creation in the agriculture sector in terms of exportable agricultural products in the country. And that's been our package on Business Morning. I want to thank everyone out there for watching. We do appreciate your time with us on the show. I am Bolaji Akinwali. News track is up next. Thank you.